All right. Hey, welcome to the very first Slettercast podcast. We are sitting here. If you can't tell, we're at Heydays. This is 2023 version. Uh, it's live and thriving here already. This is Friday. Uh, the show starts tomorrow. And uh, we're about 75% set up. So we're in the Deviant Inc. booth. We got Sledderbox over here. We've got SledYO over here. Speaking of SledYO, we've got Jeff and Anna of SledYO. And we'll bring in Anthony uh, here in a little bit to, to chat. But um, SledYO, tell us about you guys. Where do you guys come from? Yeah, so Sled Wyo is, uh, so I guess the short answer is we're a backcountry guide service and rental company in Sheridan, Wyoming, at the base of the Bighorn Mountains. And uh, yeah, that's the super short answer, um, straight to the point, but that's, we've been guiding for the uh, last couple of years, and then last year we launched the rental side of stuff. So yeah, relatively new company. Yep, on the skidoo side, right? Yep. Running, running 100%. Ski doos, yeah, yeah. We I've always been a ski doo guy since I've been a little kid, and uh, we signed a deal with Uncharted Society last year and started the rental company and just uh, sticking with ski doo. I've wrote a couple other brands here and there, and then some of my guides have had other other brands, but yeah, primarily ski doo. Awesome, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm Trevor Erickson with DV and Inc. This is Mac Weibel as well uh, with DV and Inc. Uh, we almost forgot that. See, it's the first first <laughs> podcast, and we're just we're just assuming things, right? Oh, so yeah. uh, we've got a, a a list of things to uh, to chat about today. But uh, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with Sled Wyo, go go look at go look them up on uh, Instagram on all the social channels. It's at Sled Wyo. Mm -hmm. It's just clean like that, right? Just yep. Sled Wyo, and. Uh, you're, you're going to be, you're going to thoroughly enjoy the content that they create. So not only do they run a business, but, uh, the content that they create is amazing. And I would, I'm assuming most of that is because of what you do outside of sled Wyo. Do you, are you able to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the reason why sled Wyo's kind of grown on Instagram and kind of took off the last couple of years is because, um, by trade, I'm a photographer and a cinematographer. And uh, that's what really pays the bills. So when I'm not snowmobiling, I go do these film production projects and photography. And uh, I actually got into that because of snowmobiling. I wanted to promote my business. So I purchased a camera and and just ended up really liking photography and cinematography and just kind of used it to promote my business. And now here we are. People really enjoy the content that Sled Wild puts out. So not only are we that guide company, but we're also just having fun, picking up a camera and trying to make cool videos. Yeah. Uh, so who do you who do you work with outside of Sled Wyo? Uh, well, I'm 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 freelance, so I kind of go all over the place. I like to say I specialize in the outdoor industry. Um, I like to do travel and tourism projects. Um, I film a lot of hunts um, in the hunting industry, and then uh, I'll do some work with some nonprofits. Some you know not super exciting stuff. Yeah. But, um, I'm 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 very fortunate to be able to go travel and go all these cool places and pick up a camera and try to put a story together. So. Nice. Yeah. Can you say who who you film for? I, uh, yeah, I can say. So one of my one of my biggest <laughs> clients is Kuyu. I don't like to throw that out there, but I film. I'll for throw Kuyu. it out there. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I shoot a lot of content for a company called Kuyu. Yeah. I'm very very fortunate to be able to go film some hunts with that with that brand, and they're super big in the hunting industry, and it's been super awesome. I'm yeah. very very grateful. Yeah, no, that's cool. And then uh, you two are a couple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, basically ever since I met him, that's how I got into snowmobiling. So he kind of, well, I was interested in it because he, <laughs> I mean, it just looks cool riding sleds. I never knew what a sled was before we even started dating. So, <laughs> Which was a couple years ago or? Yeah, five years. Five, five years, years ago. Yeah, yeah, been together five years and obviously I'm a sled head and Anna grew up doing rodeo and all this cool stuff and since I told her from the beginning, like, snowmobiling is my thing. It's my passion. Like, you can come with me or, you know, just be ready. That's, like, I'm going to do it no matter what. And yep. Anna, just the first couple of times we went out, she enjoyed it and was kind of good at it the first yeah. couple of times. I was shocked how fast she picked it up. But yeah. Always up for a challenge. So. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going we're gonna to yeah. talk more about that uh, here in a little bit. I'm just going to turn that down. Just I don't know if it's going to capture anything. And... That tent just about fell over. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> is there uh, someone back there? No, it bounced back. I think we're... We good? We might be okay. I'll probably... <laughs> is, is it, gonna, it might fall. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, 
we want to we want to dive into the content side of snowmobiling. So with uh, you know obviously with how popular social media is and, and capturing content, there's more and more people who or sledders who are out there who are trying to just capture and bring back off the mountain or the hills what they did on the mountain. And for most of us, it doesn't look as cool <laughs> afterwards as we thought it did while we were doing it, right? But you guys seem to always make it look like even more cooler than maybe it was. I, I don't know. Yeah. But maybe walk us through like, um, you know, we can, we, can, we can talk about kind of what you take into the backcountry with mm -hmm. you as far as equipment goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm very fortunate to have the guides that I do and the people I ride with. Um, I like to say they're very photogenic. So that really helps a lot, just being able to point a camera at some, at some pretty good riders. I'll never say, I don't ever want to come out as cocky or arrogant, and I won't ever say we have the best, ride, we're the best riders. Um, because, it's, I mean, there's people that are killing it, crushing it. And uh, so, but I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that our, I'll, I will but say our guides are super talented riders. You know, they're good at what they do, um, you know. So it's, I'm very lucky in that regard to be able to point a camera at some people that can do cool stuff. I go tell them to do this thing and they'll, and they'll do it. So that helps a lot, just having whatever you're filming. That's the, what I tell people always. Like, number one priority is make sure what you're filming is interesting because that story always wins. It doesn't matter how beautiful it is, but you got to make sure it's people are going to... I mean, that's why iPhone videos go viral. It's yeah. like, if the content's interesting, people are going to like it. But. Yep. So that's where I start, really. Just make sure whatever I'm filming looks looks good, and then um, from there I like to have fun with edits. And you can you can make it more interesting than it is too, for sure. But yeah. Usually starts with the content. Are you are you looking? Are you are you paying a lot of attention to the landscape? Are you like you know this this might this might be a cool thing, but the landscape isn't that great behind or within it, and so pass. Let's go to something else or what? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with getting content, a lot of the times, um, sometimes it's controlled, sometimes it's directed. I'll have someone go do a very specific line with um, a backdrop or something, or maybe the light looks really good. Sometimes it's just complete chaos, where I'm just like whipping my camera out and getting whatever I can, and sometimes those are the best clips. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a mix. Most of the time, I'm like, hey, go do this. The light looks really good here. Or I'll tell Anna, hey, go do a wheelie for 100 yards on this ridge because uh -huh. there's a backdrop, you know. So mix of both, for sure. So what's the breakdown? How much are you using a, a mobile or an, I, an iPhone versus, you know, your tricked out setup? Me, what's the breakdown there? Yeah, me personally, I'm probably using my, my tricked up setup like 80% of the time just because, you know, in my heart, I'm a creative and like I, I'm a sole believer of the of like camera gear like obviously iPhones are getting better and better but sometimes it breaks my heart when I do see a viral iPhone clip because I'm like <laughs> man like I'm, I'm an artist I consider myself an artist I, I love to film I love to I'm a nerd with the camera gear like I've uh -huh. got the super expensive camera setup but this iPhone clips going viral so I do admit it breaks my heart a little bit but I, I get it it's good for on the marketing side of things too that's great um, but yeah, 80% I'm, well, I'm whipping out my good camera cause I, I just want to stand out a little differently than yeah. most people. So what's, what's like the, the one thing about your camera setup that you think, like, what's your favorite thing, piece of equipment about your camera setup? Is there, is it like the lens that, is it the actual yeah. camera? Like what, what's the thing that makes? Well, last it? year I finally upgraded to a camera that shoots 4k at 120 frames per second. Okay. That really stepped up the content game. Especially that gives you that slow, like that buttery, that buttery yep. slow-mo. And I, I have a love hate relationship with slow-mo because like it is overused a little bit, but it also always looks really good in my opinion. Yeah. There's a time and place for it, but, um, yeah, I, that's, I, I like using that for powder shots. Like yep. there's nothing, there's nothing cooler than a hundred, like a super slow-mo pow shot. Like everyone loves that. Everyone's loves seeing that content. So yeah, having so that ability is awesome. We could we could probably bring this in, but guys, tell us about that that one you posted like like a couple weeks ago. I mean, <laughs> so we'll 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 overlay that that video in. The first time I watched that clip, it was like I was there. Like I could feel. Mm. It was like, oh, I'm going into the snow right now. I can't see anything. It was. It was like I was just looking it. I was experiencing it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with the camera. Like you can get so much further zoomed in and not have it all pixelated. Like yeah. an iPhone. Yeah. Versus yeah. An iPhone. Which makes it 
like feel like you're there. Yeah. Which is a lot and it took yeah. off just that one post. I mean, you mm-hmm. were telling us, I mean, there's nearly what 2000 sends on Instagram. I don't know how many views you guys had on that, but like thousands of, mm-hmm. of, of the metrics, right. Mm-hmm. We're, we're on it. Yeah, I think it's but, almost a hundred thousand. I posted it a few days ago, which is pretty good for us yeah. and the snowmobile world in general. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, you know, I'm like I said, I'm very fortunate because that was that was a video of Riley. I'm taking the the footage, but um, I was just able to tell Riley like, hey, go jump off this. You know, try. it wasn't even a very big jump, but I could tell like my the way my brain worked as I saw that terrain feature. Yeah, I was like, hey, even it's not a huge jump, but I know because of how good the snow was. What like, it's gonna look like? I know it's gonna look super <laughs> buttery if you just jump off this. And everyone buttery it was. Yeah, it's not a super technical maneuver. Like anyone could do that. Yeah. But it's just the fact that it was super deep, epic pow. It was so relatable, and every like you said, it felt like you were there. Yeah. Like, that kind. Whatever you're filming has to be. Like whatever's in front of the camera is the priority. Yeah. And you make it look good later. Like that video probably would have done pretty good if it was just an iPhone. But what really stepped it up was that super awesome 4K 120 yeah. buttery smooth zoomed in tight shot. You could see the snow hitting his goggles. Like yeah, that's, you, that's yeah, the difference. It literally felt like you yourself could feel that snow hitting you in the face. Mm-hmm. Like that, it, it just felt like that. I yeah. was really hoping at the end he was just gonna come to a stop and then just fall into the snow <laughs> just like yeah it probably also helped that it. it was like probably 90 degrees when i posted that video like in the west it yeah. was super hot and people were like oh that looks so good right yeah. now like I would, perfect timing you know, genius. yeah i love posting genius. Stuff this hey. time of year <laughs> right there we got to get into your mentals yeah. there was some mental stuff going on there with that one if you're a creator looking to get <laughs> views right now post in the heat of summer after heydays start posting pow content yes pow content does awesome right now like yeah. way better than a jump would do like or a tree line like post pal content right now That'll there you go attention <laughs> uh, that's the social media tip right there from yeah. jeff timing timing is a timing. big part of it yeah nice yeah okay so that's uh kind of content setup walk me through like um i i am uh let's say it's not my first time on a snowmobile let's say i'm like uh uh i, I back country a little bit mm-hmm. okay and so I know how to, you know, I know how to get on edge and all that. Walk me through like a, 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 what a regular day would look like if I choose to outfit with sled a while. I show up in the morning, like walk me just through what, what a normal day would look like. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of depends on where, so we, we don't offer lodging um, right now, but it depends on where you're staying. So usually what we do is we have a shop in Sheridan. And uh, we'll either have our clients come in the night before, sign paperwork, and then we'll kind of go over, like, what kind of gear they got, what kind of sled they got. And we do have a safety meeting in the shop prior to going up to the mountain, just like a brief safety meeting. And then once we get up on the mountain, we kind of evaluate where we're going to take the clients. And I kind of get a feel for their skills. We always ask people before they book what their skill level is, and that gives our guides an idea of, like, what kind of terrain to take them to. But once we get up on the mountain, I still evaluate their skills because some people lie about their skills. Yeah. You know, like they're, they're either under a lot they're of people. Like, most, send me some video clips. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, <laughs> it's the opposite, actually. People are better than they say they are. Yeah. I or, can see that. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, whoa, dude, you, you put beginner. It's like, yeah. you were clearly experienced. Let's go have some fun, you know? And like, that yeah, because you don't want to show up and be that be that guy yeah, or girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most like, people are pretty honest. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then we'll do a, a more in depth safety meeting. We'll do our avalanche beacon checks and all that stuff and talk about, like, just. Like, hey, I, I've got, like, sign language that I give clients. Like, hey, this is my sign language. If I do this, this means that don't go over there, that kind of thing. What, but, uh, well, what's your, is this secret? Like, no, no, like, it's not secret. It's like a secret sign language that you do? <laughs> no, it's you not secret. You don't want to give out your signs? No, it's just, I'm like, hey, there's boulders here. Like, take it easy. Like, if I had to go like this, like, hey, just, if I wave my hands, I'm like, hey, this is a boulder field. I wouldn't yeah. do a hard pow turn here because, gotcha. like, you might hit something. So, just stuff like that. But I just usually. You got to protect the sleds, right? Oh, yeah. It's always about the sleds. I don't care. You get <laughs> I just want the sleds to be good so we can keep riding. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so that's kind of the basic layout. We just go over our safety meetings and then. And then we just go have fun depending on, and I always ask um, clients typically, like, we have clinics, but even on the guided tours, we're teaching people. And if there's ask, a certain... Yeah, I'm like, hey, is there anything you want to work trick on today? Or, or technique or something that we want to refine or something? Yeah, and that gives me an idea. Like, they're like, hey, I want to learn re-entries today. Then I'm, like, kind of scouting some spots that we can practice re-entries in a safe, controlled, like, so I'm not taking them above a cliff. You know, if they lose their sled, their sled's gone. Yeah. Like, looking for stuff like, hey, here's a good spot. Let's practice. And then I show them. And then I teach them, and then they try it, and then we just repeat that cycle until they start to kind of get it. Yep. But, yeah, that's kind of what we do. Um, 
we just uh, take them out. And sometimes people don't want to learn. They're pretty experienced, so we just go have fun. Yeah. But. So what would you say, like, your guys' number one selling point? Is it is it because you're going to be getting just really cool content? Is it because we're going to teach you guys some stuff? Is it because we're going to take you to the best snow? Like, what is, like, what would you say that number one selling point is for you guys? That makes you guys different. Well, um, first of all, if we start with our location there in the Bighorn Mountains. I like to tell people um, there's places that are way better riding, in my opinion. Um, but the Bighorns are amazing when they get good snow. I love riding there. I grew up there. And, uh, but the, the one, advantage, uh, one advantage we have is that we're so close to the Midwest relative to some of the other places that are also amazing riding. Yeah. And that's one thing I'll say. I'll never say we have the best riding in North America, and I'll yeah. never say we have the best guides because there's people crushing it everywhere. And uh, we have good riding. We have great riding. But it's a, people can almost day trip it from Minnesota. The proximity, yeah, yeah. to get to get into the mountains from yeah. the Midwest, right? We're the we're the f the closest to the upper Midwest. We're yep. the first stop. You have to drive by the Bighorns basically to go farther west. So that's the one advantage we got. So if the snow's good, it's like they can Stay make a here, last minute yeah. trip, get more know? days on the snow. Absolutely, yeah. They don't have to plan a twenty three hour drive to go ride and take time off work. They can almost do it in a weekend, which is awesome. Yeah, that's and even if they have been to the Bighorns, like. You've grown up there, so you know every single spot pretty much. Yeah, every nook and cranny. We, we're nerds, Even if man. Been there, yeah. We study the area so hard, and that's what we tell people. Like, we have clients that have been riding the bighorns for 20 plus years, but they want to come out with us anyway. Yeah. Just to kind of see where we go, which I, I always joke that we're going to blindfold you into the zone and then blindfold you out of the zone so you don't steal my spots. But um, <laughs> we're, we're there's so much area Savage. that we have. Yeah, we're just kind of nerds. Like, we study the, the mountains like well, you're, crazy. Even, in, even outside of winter, right? Like you guys, you guys are yeah. exploring, mm -hmm. uh, exploring in the summertime. Yeah. I see a lot of the content you guys post. Mm -hmm. I think that's super important uh, to mm -hmm. know what's under the snow, right? Like yeah. I've been here spring, summer, fall, winter. I know mm -hmm. like this is a waterfall cliff mm -hmm. down this drainage. We don't want to mess with this yeah. because you've been there hiking through there or whatever in the yeah. And that's you know. another advantage I'll tell people too, like our clients that have been riding before and they just want to hire a guide service is like, well, I'm here in the summer and like, there's there's places not to go in the Bighorns for sure, and I'm like, yeah, why? Sometimes when I I see reviews online of people that had a bad experience in the Bighorns, I'm like, well, where'd you go? And they tell me, I'm like, well, no, no kidding. Like, of course you had a bad experience. I I've never rode there. I've lived there my whole life. You know, it's like there's wrong places to go. It's not epic everywhere. Yeah. So that's one huge advantage. Like when you, if you just try to go like self guided and you just look at a map. You're going to be like, oh, well, it's all mountains. It should be all good. But yep. there's not. There's certain places that aren't good. It might not have the elevation or, or whatever, you know. So yep. as guides, I've been there, done that. I've made the mistakes. I've taken clients into zones before. And I'm like, well, this wasn't too great. I probably won't ever come back mm -hmm. here. I'm going to go somewhere else. So Yeah. And someone coming in for one or two days, you really don't have have time to, to figure that out. Right. Yeah. While it's going on, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's definitely an advantage of a guide service is like they know what's good and what's not. Because if you just look at a map or you look at Google Earth, you're not going to know if that zone is actually really good yeah. or if it's crap, you know, so. Yeah. Unfortunately, Onyx off-road doesn't yet tell you this is a banger zone. <laughs> I'm kind of glad <laughs> they, it they doesn't. Probably, they probably shouldn't <laughs> yeah. do that, right? They shouldn't they, do yeah, that. No, as no, like, no, I don't no. want them to tell people where the good spots are. Yeah. Just, you know, I definitely use Onyx. Banger I love Onyx, zone right <laughs> here. Just show me the banger zones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a... Uh, that would be a... Uh, that would be a detrimental to guide overlay. services. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, uh, Anna. Yeah? Three years ago, yeah. you were not seen on a, on a mountain, in mountains on a snowmobile. Nope. I Never, not not once. No. Three years ago. Yep. Okay, so fast forward a year. Now you're over two years ago. You're starting to get into uh, backcountry snowmobiling with Jeff mm -hmm. and Sled Wyo. I'll call it going from zero to hero. <laughs> I mean, you're putting on your, you know, your own. You, we can talk about your the the ladies uh, snowmobile clinic that you're putting on here in January. But walk us through like, like. If someone is if someone is in your position right now where you were two years ago, like I, I want to get into this. I'm a female rider. I've kind of just done maybe, you know, around the yard with family on some trails. I want to get into some backcountry stuff. Yeah. Walk us through kind of your progression, sure. and then if you could do it over again, what you know now, if you could just rewind and have that knowledge when you started, what would that? What would be some of those? those things that you would want to have right then and there? Yeah, so 
first thing's obviously just mindset. You're not going to get it right the first even 20 rides you go in. And you're riding with all males, right? Or yeah. Learning a, or I any? did learn. I actually learned um, riding from Mandy Fable. She's a Polaris ambassador. Okay. Um, so she helped a bunch. So you spent, a time, you spent some time with her first? Yeah. I think we only went together two or three times, but... She just and what did that look like? Like, is it like, hey, this is like how you get on edge or how you throw your weight around? As yeah. females, you know, right. typically might might be considered lighter in weight than a male, so yeah. there's some different rider input that you have to put in. But yeah, yeah, she she's actually a really <coughs> short gal, um, so she learned most of our weight comes from our lower end, where males can just kind of yeah. muscle it around, but most of our um, I guess muscle is in our bottom half of our body. So So you guys are probably using more more lower end right. mass to yeah. to input the stone bone where, yeah. you, where you want it to go. Yeah, that and just how to use the throttle correctly was a big help cuz I was I also did weightlifting, so I was trying to muscle the sled around myself. She's like, "No, you don't need to do that. Just use the throttle mm -hmm. um, correctly and then you'll you don't even need to be as tired at the end of the day. Yeah. So that helped a bunch, getting a female rider to help. Um, he also helped a bunch, just getting a lot of seat time in because he rides all the time. Um, I kind of just figured it out as I went, honestly. But yeah. Yeah, just practicing counter steering, just circles all the time. I did that so much. Um, that helped a bunch, so... There you have it. That's the, that's the ticket right there. Just circles in a field or cir circles <laughs> Honestly, on a hill. Yeah. <laughs> field and then just work, it work the... has certain balance points and balance once, point in the yeah. sled. So you can... It's basically, yeah, balancing the sled with circles and then kind of S-curves as well. Um, just gets you in tune with the sled. Yeah. Is how I just kept progressing that way. You gotta start somewhere. Start small. Also, right? I did not start in powder. <laughs> we we didn't have a bunch of powder to begin with, so that really helped because um, that's where it's harder to control a sled is crusty snow. Yeah. So you okay? Yeah. Honestly. Absolutely. Yeah. Ride bad snow. That's an industry <laughs> secret. Seriously, because when I grew up, I my dad only took me out on Sundays, so it wasn't a guarantee that the snow was gonna be good, you know. And like, yeah. if the snow was too deep, he didn't take me because he didn't want to get me unstuck all day. Yeah. He wanted to go have fun. So ride. Ride bad snow. If you can learn how to ride bad snow, powder's easy. Mm -hmm. So go. Don't don't. If the snow's bad, don't sit at home. Go ride. <coughs> Put in seat time. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, was there a certain point, Jeff, where you were like, "All right, she's ready to hang," or or were you like, "Nah, like you're you're hopping on the into the saddle rodeo." Anna does rodeo. Yep. Did rodeo. Still does rodeo. I did. Did I rodeo. Didn't do much more, but as we learned last night, she was using the lasso, <laughs> right? Yeah, that lasso. <laughs> she lasso would lasso yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, no, there was there was there was kind of two moments that I really like. It was like a light bulb. It was like, man, she's she's gonna get this. Um, the first couple times we went out, and she like immediately kind of figured out how to get it on edge. Because a lot of people struggle with that concept, like getting a snowmobile on one ski. That's hard for some people, but she did it like right away, and like whoa. Like, that was fast. Yeah. yeah really I fast. I was like, I'm okay. Overdo it. <laughs> she would overdo it. And I'm like, okay. And I taught her to overdo it. That's, I'm, I'm not a very great, I'm not as good of a teacher as Anna is, but I, I wanted her to overdo it so then she could kind of go back. But, um, so it was that moment, the first couple times I was like, this is, okay, that was quick. Let's see. She's got potential here. And then, um, when did I start taking you guiding? Probably two, two years ago. Years. Was it your first tail gun experience? Yeah. Uh, really, when she when she started becoming better than most clients that I take out, um, like that was it. That was like okay, yeah. She like, can she, like the potential with this girl is insane. Like she's because I've, I with all you know, all due respect, I've taken clients out. They've been riding snowmobiles twenty plus years, first time in the mountains, and they're culture shocked. They're yep. like, this is different. This is hard. And I'm like, well, Anna's learning how to do it. She's never touched a snowmobile before, you know. And I got these guys saying they've been riding for twenty plus years, and I was like, well. Anna's pretty good, like, so that was kind of like, well, she's, what What can this girl do, you know, like, what's the roof here? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta want to challenge yourself, or otherwise, and, yeah, like, you gotta challenge yourself, and then... You gotta um, fail, because if you never oh, fail, yeah. like, you're just, you're gonna be stuck, right? You're gonna be stuck mm -hmm. at a certain level. Yeah. 
And so, well, that's that's cool. So now uh, we, we've got, is it the, the first week of January? Yep, first January week? 4th through the 7th, we're going to have our clinic. Okay, and what's it called? What's the name of the clinic? Do we have a name for it? Swimmins Beginner Intermediate Backcountry Clinic. Okay, and so yeah. you'll be, like, you'll be an, an instructor there. Anyone yep. else? Yep, and Tana Hoffman, she's a to-be ambassador uh, athlete, so she's... She lives out in Alpine. She's a really good writer. Too. Nice. And are, is it all sold out now? Like, is this just, Yeah. this is just, when this goes, when this gets published, this is just good to know information. Yeah. We uh, could technically take one more spot, but we're pretty much. We're going to have more though. Our plan is yeah. to have more. Maybe yeah. we'll get this add first one. one out. See, yep. we're going to work the kinks out mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, then you'll have great content like to show people, this is what these, these things look like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, this one will be fun too because it's all inclusive at uh, one of our awesome lodging partners. It's a beautiful place, and it's gonna. We're basically gonna take over the whole lodge, just oh, like nice. wild party, and uh, have all these awesome women doing this and clinic. It's, it's, is it three days or two days? Two days of riding. Two days of riding. Three nights. And it's clinic. It's clinic style, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what would what if I'm considering going? What's that transformation? If I'm, let's just say, I'm like Midwest. I'm, I'm, I haven't rid, I haven't been on mountains very much. What's that transformation that you think I will experience as a, if I was a female rider spending two days with you guys? Yeah, so it's completely different than trail riding. I had a lot of gals who were kind of uh, scared to get it on edge, I guess, or weren't really sure. Um, but once we used, like, the throttle correctly, we, do, we call them little blips, the yep. throttle. They just felt a lot more confident with moving with the sled not working against the yeah. sled so we're gonna learn yeah. we're gonna learn blips and getting on edge yeah getting on edge um we also do a lot of counter steering obviously to get okay. it on edge and um side hilling as well if we get in that far learning so, how to get unstuck too that's yeah. a huge one that being self-sufficient exactly yeah <laughs> self-sufficient yeah mm -hmm. we had one any tri any yeah. any like any uh any tips like anna tips from uh, you know, being self-sufficient and getting unstuck? Yeah, so I saw a lot As of As a female rider, yeah, right? Um, pretty much wouldn't put enough into their sled. You really got to rock that thing out. And basically use all of your muscle to kind of rock back and forth. Uh, that does most of the work for you instead of digging out each time. Yeah. That helps a lot. Um, but if it gets to the point where it's really stuck, yeah. Like marmoting in... Uh, pushing s snow under the sled too, yeah. and then really rocking back and forth. Yeah, we there's a it's not not always an exact science yeah. getting unstuck, yeah. but we try to we tell people every stuck is a learning opportunity. It's like okay, yeah. how did you get here? What happened? And, and also we're all about conserving energy in the backcountry so you can ride longer and ride harder. So we try to teach them like, you know, every situation is different, but we're like here here's how what we would try first to get unstuck so you're not using as much muscle, you're not getting as tired. Yeah, so, that's sort of thing. so pause yeah. right there because um, that thing is swaying about again. To tip over. But yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> catch it. I won't. I don't think it'll hit your head. Um, I, I do think. I think a lot of people get get unstuck in different ways, and so I think just in general, it might be good to know. Like you said, if it's a normal circumstance, a, no, a pretty normal situation, what's your first go-to method of of getting unstuck i'm guessing probably the easiest less uh mm -hmm. input from you know from your your own exertion what what, what is that yeah so my f our first trick i mean it depends on what it is our first trick is use gravity to your advantage so if you're on a steep slope just roll your sled over we're lucky all these newer sleds have fuel injection and you don't have to sit there for an hour yeah. starting it to get it going again so if you're on a slope use gravity to your advantage um and then also use your throttle to your advantage there's a lot of situations you can get unstuck without using any muscle really just break that track loose, break that snow loose with the throttle and roll it and get your sled out. Um, if you're on flat ground, um, we always say pin and wiggle. Use your butt to break your sled loose, break that snow. That's it's, Your sled's getting hung up on the running board, so you want to shake that sled and get that snow underneath your track and give it traction. But you want to do that to an extent because you don't want to ruin your belt. You don't want to ruin your sled. So pin and wiggle, but not, not too much. Yeah. Right? If it's not coming out, the first pin and wiggle, just stop and evaluate. Yep. From there. So those are the first two things. Use your sled, use gravity to your advantage. Grab a buddy. 
get a ski <laughs> Well, that one's a, a quick job. little ski pole. <laughs> ski pole is always great, but yeah. I always tell. The fallback is always just give me a ski pole. Give yeah. me a ski pole. <laughs> yeah, I always tell clients like, hey, because we pull skis all year long. I'm like, help save our energy a little bit. <laughs> Try to get yourself unstuck first. Yeah. Then have someone come help you. If you can't get yourself out, have someone come help you. But yes, ski pole is always go to as well. That's yeah. nice to have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if your buddy's there. But sometimes your buddies aren't there. They're stuck too. So that's what we teach our, our beginners is to being self-sufficient in the backcountry. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we missed this, Anna. Uh, if there was one, what you know now, mm -hmm. if you could go back day one, like when you really started getting into it, what would be that, that, uh, mm -hmm. Technique, that tip, whatever, mental, physical, what would be that thing that, okay, I know this now, now that saves me months, a year, you know, of trial and error. Is there, is there that, that one thing that you can kind of pinpoint? Um, just keep going. I know that sounds <laughs> cliche, but like, if I would reps, have, basically, yeah. it's like you're just gonna have to put the reps it's in. It's like, it's like a basketball practice. Like you're gonna have to do it over and over again to get that muscle memory. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the so the more reps you take, the quicker you fail, the quicker you adjust. Yeah. Don't be scared. And One thing I just want to add real quick yeah. too with Anna is because you know obviously she's got 509 sponsorship now. She's this amazing talented rider, but there was a lot of frustration too. You know, it, it sounds like, you know, it was super easy for her, but there was a lot of frustration. Tears. So that's okay. <laughs> I tell clients, too, it's okay to be frustrated. Like, yeah. You're not going to get it right away. Snowmobiling has a steep learning curve, so um, it's okay to... Be, I get frustrated, too. I'm still learning. Like, it never yeah. stops, so... Um, yeah, it shouldn't... It really should never stop, right? Yeah. Like, if you're if you're trying to... Yeah. To just keep getting better yeah. and progress in the so, sport. Uh, yeah. I just want to throw that out there, yeah. too. So those and look, gals, now yeah. she's on a, on a billboard, <laughs> right? Yeah. There she is. There she is. So two years, just keep banging, yeah. right? A little sweat, little tears. Just yep. keep grinding. And then you're going to be on a yep. on a billboard. Yeah. Yep. And don't, yeah, I'd say try and follow. I mean, <laughs> they can they can help you get unstuck. There's... It's at least you're trying. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. don't just sit there. Cause I found myself doing that. I was like, man, I should have, I should have at least tried to go up yeah. that line. <laughs> yeah. So one thing you didn't say that probably should be, should be known is you have to have a good crew Yeah. when that. you're like, if you were starting off with Jeff and Jeff was a punk, <laughs> right. <laughs> and didn't allow you to make those mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, chances are you probably would have been one and done, right? Like yeah. I can't, oh, I can hang. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just drop it. No. So get get a good crew that's gonna sit there and work with you. Doesn't matter if you're female or male, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy right here, you you started, you were a snowboarder, yeah. Before you started snowmobiling six, seven years ago, it didn't take you very long. You put in the reps. No, but I mean, the one thing that I was always worried about is that I didn't want to slow the group down, mm -hmm. and you know, it was like. I didn't want to try that because, man, I get stuck. I'm going to have to slow everyone down. Everyone gets pissed. And so that was always a holdup for me as yeah. to why maybe I didn't send it as much as I wanted to. Yeah, and a good group is key. Gotta, you just got to get over that because we're all homies. We're all here mm -hmm. to have a good time, and we're all here to help each other out. And so if you can just mentally get over that, um, you know, then you'll get much better. Yeah, and if there's people in, a, in your group that are like that, maybe – shift to some different uh people who you ride with yeah uh, choose different friends choose different lot. friends yeah <laughs> choose different friends that's that's real though that is real as it gets yeah. yeah you gotta have a good group to go with and that's one rule that we always have is we never get frustrated people are like people apologize to us a lot when they get stuck and it's their first time like no 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 like you're never gonna learn if you don't get stuck and uh, we get a ride all the time, yeah. so you're not slowing us down at all. It's not like it, this is our one vacation. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And if it did bother you, you guys wouldn't be in that business, right? Yep. Yep. You would not be in the business of <laughs> no. helping other people learn how to increase their skills on, yep. on a snowmobile, And right? that's another selling point of ours, too, because you could just go out west and try to find a random group to ride with, but then you don't know who you're riding with. Yeah. And, so, and when, you know, Joe Smo is working a 60-hour work week and he just wants to go ride on the weekend, he, he doesn't necessarily want to teach someone on his one day off that he gets to go ride, you know? So it's like, you could go do that, but you might get stuck with someone who doesn't want to teach you. They get frustrated when you're slowing them down. So that's why hiring a guide service is great, because we get a ride all the time. 
to the point where we get burnt out at the end of the mm-hmm. year because we're riding so much. So you don't slow us down at all. We're like, you know, we'll stop and get you unstuck. So that's plus yeah. of having both of us. If there's a wife and a husband, I always like help the hu- or help the wife um, too when she's having issues and yeah. it just Been boosts there, done her that. confidence too. So yeah, it's love plus. it. Mm-hmm. Cool. So we'll bring Anthony on. All right. So we, you can tell we swapped, we swapped someone out, swapped Mac for Anthony. Uh, Anthony is a guide. Help me, correct me if I'm wrong here. A guide with Sled Wyo. Uh, been doing it, was it two, Three two years? years? Now. Two years now. Three, yeah. Th- this will be your second year? Yep. Third year. No, third this year. This will be your third yeah, year. Third year. Cool. Um, and a couple of questions that we have uh, for you guys is uh, one, if, if I want to become a guide for an outfitter somewhere, what are some, what are some things I should be doing to, to make myself, I guess, marketable? To a company like you guys, yeah, and, and he's and he's pretty fresh, right? So Anthony could kind of help out. Yeah, Anthony will have great input okay. for this too because he kind of reached out to me and just uh, obviously he's a guy now, so he did something right. But um, so usually what I um, would say is make sure you have the personality for it first before even thinking about being a guide because like when we're posting all the cool videos, like hey, we get a snowmobile all winter long. It's like yeah, it's great, but also be willing to sacrifice because it's like work. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not it's, just like you're hanging with the with the with the boys, right? Like yeah, it's, it's, it's work. work. You're gonna be dealing. Uh, very rarely do you get experienced, like really experienced riders. When you do, it's awesome because you just it is like riding with the boys. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, it's people's first time in the mountains, so you're gonna be doing a lot of teaching, and you want to ensure that they come back in the future. So you got to be really patient and just make sure they and they experience the mountains the correct way. And don't ruin it for them. So make sure you have the you're the personality first. If you go if you've ever rode with your buddies and you brought someone new and you're frustrated that they brought someone new, then maybe it's not for you. You go go pursue something else. But yeah, start there. Make sure you have the right person personality. Yeah. So if you don't like if you don't if you if watching someone increase their skills on a snowmobile is not something that you really care about, probably not not the right. Yeah, if you're in it for yourself, just for yourself, then probably not. Yeah, which which is fine for for most people who don't want a guide, right? Like they just want to do yeah. their thing. But yeah, if absolutely. you want to be become a guide, you gotta have that personality. Yeah. and I know plenty of awesome people, awesome human beings that uh, they admit they don't have the personality to be a guide because they want to go have fun on their sleds, and they just like, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't. Yeah. And that's that's totally fine. I'm not dogging on people that don't want to be a guide. Like you can have a great personality and still not be a guide. Like yeah. that's that's totally a thing. But if you want to be a guide, make sure you're yep. patient with people for sure. Because you got to have the personality. Mm-hmm. There's one. What's patience? Big one. Lots of patience. just lots. Lots of patience. Not a yeah. patient person. Yeah. Don't don't do it. Yeah. Bring your mic up a little bit. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Can there we go. Now? now I can hear you a lot <laughs> better. Can, yeah. We can hear you now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so definitely there. Um, and then have like a like any do- any job really. Like people check socials now. Like make sure you have a clean social media because <laughs> yes, I've fun, right. I've had a, a couple interesting people be like, yeah, I want to be a guide. I'm like, they send me this nice email, and then I go check their Instagram, and it's like all political, and it's like just I'm like just you know have a clean social media. Like, yeah, because that's first impression. What is clean though? What's clean nowadays? What would you say? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like I have my my version of what clean is, but yeah, I think I mean when I'm looking specifically, just like clean cut, don't have anything illegal on there really, um, and like I avoid anything political. Yeah, whether, well, um, whether whether you are political or not, just you don't you oh, don't yeah. have to put like you don't have to yeah. show that oh, sure, in, in that in space it, yeah. yeah right yeah. especially if you're trying to do things in that space mm-hmm. you know yeah like i think there's a time and place to be political and obviously like have your own opinions but i think just like for me personally social media is not that time and place sure. to be posting political things just because especially with snowmobiling like, i just want to post snowmobile content you know like right there with you and I, you never know who you're gonna get as a client like it, it's i think one way to instantly make 50 percent of the population be against you is to post political stuff because that's a guarantee it's like you know if you post whatever it is 50 yep. percent of those people are going to disagree with it so you're already limiting your potential customer base so that's why it's better to stay neutral because then you're not eliminating anyone yep so yeah that okay so clean so okay so we've got uh you gotta have the personality you gotta have some patience clean clean socials just clean yeah. resume right mm-hmm. like like make yourself presentable and marketable Mm -hmm. right yeah because if you have those two things like it really doesn't matter how good of a writer you are like we can teach you 
Um, but obviously, that's like the third thing is all, you want to have some skills too. Um, that's always a nice because that, that's always nice to have because I want you to be able to teach clients like your skills and so that's a definitely a huge bonus. So make yourself marketable. Post those videos, you know, that you got. You don't have to be doing these crazy 270 whip flips to be a backcountry guide. You don't have to be the best rider in the industry. You just got to have the personality for it, be responsible, and and be be able to get from point A to point B. The knowledge behind it. Yeah. Sure, so. Yeah. You don't have to be this crazy talented rider. Yeah. To be a guide. Anything else you would add to that, or is that kind of a good a good start, a good starting point there? You, yeah. You come you come packing those things and you've got a pretty good shot to have a conversation with sled wire or another outfitter yeah absolutely and just like you know obviously reach out you know it doesn't hurt at all like when i get messages like we're not always hiring i've turned plenty of people away and it's nothing personal it's just like we, we got it covered like yeah. we got enough people like i would love i wish we were busier to hire you because like that, that means we're doing good too so don't take it personal and just uh if, if you don't get it if if you don't get the job you know don't ever burn bridges because there might be a time where we're needing another guide. So if you were super nice to me and you're like respectfully understood that we weren't hiring, then I might come back to you. you yeah. Know? So never burn, never burn bridges, I'd say, especially in this industry because it's so small. Mm -hmm. It's such a tiny industry. People talk. Yeah. So definitely. So <clears throat> transition a little bit to maybe some uh, rider safety. Obviously, we play in, in the backcountry. Uh, backcountry doesn't give a crap who you are where you came from what skills you have how much money you have what toys you have in the grid that does not care right mm -hmm. and so we all we're over in idaho you guys are right next door in wyoming obviously we're an avalanche terrain uh landscape that mm -hmm. that we ride and we play around in and um one of us here has been in an avalanche <laughs> I, I haven't i actually i don't even know have you guys I, I've caused avalanches a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, I think everyone probably has been closer. Close proximity to, that, to some, some side, yeah. Yeah. But this guy right here, Anthony, yep. has, has survived day. an avalanche. That was a scary do, day. Do you mind sharing? Like, oh, walk no. us through kind of so, kind of what the experience of being there with you and then, I guess, what you would take away from that experience. Well, I mean, it was... First of all, it was the scariest day of my life by far. Um, just the just the feeling of being under the snow, having so much pressure around you, just you could not move, you could not do anything. And as soon as I was completely buried, it was. So you were fully submerged for just a little bit, and then, so how it all started was I went up, did a reentry, came back down, and I flipped over the top of my sled. And the sled pinned, pinned me under the snow because it rolled over. Me. Yeah. And uh, by that time, I didn't see the avalanche happen, the slide break, no cracks or nothing. And So hold on. If there was no avalanche, this is a thing too, right? You had someone, you had eyes on you or is that, is that a lesson we're going to learn? So Cause it, if you're pinned, really if you're pinned under the snow, right, like and you don't have any eyes on you? Under so, the boat. Yeah, no. So I got really lucky that day. Uh, I was riding with a group of like five other sledders, and then probably about 20, 30 yards, there was a group of backcountry skiers just hanging out, camping, having a fire. They were on top of me before my sledding buddies were. Wow. And uh, extremely lucky. They had eyes on me the whole time. They saw it break. On skis. On skis. Yep. They were. They had sleds there, but they were all... Sleds were parked at the bottom of the hill. They were climbing the top of the mountains and skiing down. And but they were all just they were just hanging out in campfire and and we were just playing on the same kind of hillside with them. And they they were the first ones on top of me. They I mean they were. I'm grateful for that. So part. they had they they had eyes on you from yep. from their vantage point. From their vantage point. Yep. So they they had eyes on me. And my other buddies were just down the hill ways and. They were there within a few minutes, but it just, if it wasn't for them, I would have been, I don't know, I would have been stuck there for a good minute until my buddies would have got there, but it was. When it slid, did did, did the snowmobile, like, did you slide with the snowmobile on top of you, or did that so, get off? And So the, yeah, I slid with the snowmobile coming all the way down. Mm -hmm. It was, my leg got caught in the handlebars. Oh. And so that's. So, so it kept you, it kept you it down. It kept me down, yep. And so 
it was on top of me during the whole slide and I, with my leg being caught in the handlebars it had one more flip and it pulled me up out of the snow and I was buried belly button deep down and I think that was the only thing that saved so me. So when you came to a stop, you were upright, I was belly upright, deep down. Facing, facing. Snowmobile was. Snowmobile was the the handlebars was behind my leg and yep. the dash was sitting on top of me. Wow. And I was like at like a forty five ang degree angle. So on the hill. So when you realize it's going down in that moment is your adrenaline rushing like is there so much going on in the brain There's so many things coming at you decisions what am i going to do or are you able in that moment are you able to clearly think so like this is what's happening and here's my checklist of things i got to do that's that's what went through my head just with of all the training that i've been through local clubs the level one that we went and did and everything and just i kind of had a small checklist of what I should do and none of those checklists happened like it just happened so fast so you have you have the mental checklist I but it to, was I didn't freak out it was I, so yep. fast you just couldn't yeah, I just it was just 100% yeah, survival yep and I, I didn't want to freak out because I just I knew that was gonna make the situation worse and uh, so I just I just had that mental checklist in my head and all right well let's reach for the the Abby bag and pull well that happened so fast I couldn't reach for it it just the snow was too compacted and tight and everything. And so I was like, well, let me just try to like brace an air bubble for my head in case I do get buried or try to swim. And the, none of that was possible for me. It just, with the snow bill being on top of me and everything, it just was, all I, all I had was just hope mm -hmm. in that, that moment. And I don't, I mean, it just was. Cause you're thinking, this is gonna go one of two ways. I'm gonna see light. I'm gonna see light. Or, or I'm not gonna see light. light. Yep. And I was just the whole way down. I was just praying and just, just hoping that I would see light again. And if it wasn't for the handlebars, I don't think I would have saw light again. It was, I mean, it was. You better take those handlebars. You better mount those things in your bedroom. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going <Yeah>. to. <laughs> those things should never leave your side. Nope. Nope. So, <laughs> yep. I. It was, it was after the fact that it happened, it was a lot to take in. Yeah. After I saw how big the slide was and everything, it was, and how deep the crown was at the top, it was, it was over six foot. Wow. And I just, I still don't know how it didn't pull me under farther. Yeah. But it just, so, them handlebars. So obviously, <laughs> like, okay, so you can now say that you've survived an avalanche. What, what, like, obviously, I, I'm assuming if you could go back, you would say, I just wouldn't have did what I, I wouldn't have done what I did. Yep. If you're back in that situation again tomorrow, what, what's the, what, what's your thought process going to be like that's going to get you to not do the thing that you did? Uh. Like, does anything change there? Or? Yes, I would say so, because that weekend that it happened, we got, a good 20 30 inches of fresh new snow yep that slope was more than a 30 degree slope and check at that yep check and and at that time i wasn't really thinking i was just having fun and the other thing that threw me off was the the hillside that we were playing on we had 90 percent of it tore up i mean tore up. oh interesting and i just went over off to the right where there was still a little fresh section and didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, it's going to be good. And went up, and that's when it happened. And no matter what, I mean, it's if it's tracked or not, it can still happen. That's a, that's another thing I really learned is, is I, it was, I don't know. It was. Yeah, if, if all of the boxes are checked. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to chime in real quick for insurance if they're watching this. This was not on a guided tour. Nope. And this wasn't even in our mountain range. So Montana. Just, it was in Cook <laughs> Cities. And if you don't know much about Cook City, Cook City is, like, historically dangerous. It's like a Number really one in, avalanche yeah. fatality. Yep. So it's a super sketch place to ride when you get it's, fresh snow. Fresh snow, yeah. right? I just so. want that on the record. That this, yep. wasn't with, this wasn't a guided tour. There was no clients. We take it super seriously. Avalanche safety. We don't. Probably, if we had clients, probably wouldn't even touch, even be close to that hill. that hill. So different scenario. Just yeah. wanted to chime that in there. So yeah. <laughs> we were just out for a weekend enjoying the new snow, and but 
Glad it wasn't on a guided trip. That was, yeah. No. That's that's the big thing, but it it only didn't teach me lessons, but it taught everyone else that was in my group, even the backcountry skiers yeah. that were there, and it just all opened our eyes. You know, it was it was a I don't know. It was one thing one thing uh, that I've always thought about: how do you come back? How do you come back into the mountains if you've been buried in snow? So it took me probably a good two, three weeks to get back on my sled. I was so starstruck, shocked. I mean, it it took, and that, that next ride that I went, it was in the Bighorns, and every hillside I looked at, I stopped and looked at it before I even touched it. I was just, and there for a while, I didn't even want to be back on a sled. It was just, just that feeling that I had in the back of my head, just, just scared me a little bit just starstruck me and just probably just, probably a good reset right yeah, like oh, was, just all right i'm out human yeah mm-hmm. we're not or i'm not invisible i am human yeah, <laughs> I am human. yeah. not invisible <laughs> yep i think uh, everyone kind of has that moment in the backcountry with as much if you ride a lot i think everyone kind of has a wake-up call at least mm-hmm. once in their yeah. life yeah. in the backcountry that like whether it's avalanches or just being unprepared mouse traps or just whatever like that, yeah, yeah everyone which is good and bad it's yeah. a blessing yeah. and a curse but definitely definitely doesn't hurt to be over prepared but yep. well great anything else you guys would add otherwise we'll sign off this has been yeah this is an inaugural session right here yeah. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> first very podcast. first yeah I'm excited so if no one ever hears this then we know <laughs> we know why <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the cameras didn't record right. the audio Something. didn't record something happened testing, right? we're testing gear here yeah <laughs> that'd be a shame wouldn't it yeah Okay, well, you guys um, enjoy heydays. Heydays number one for you guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's gonna be fun. Oh yeah, yeah, awesome. it's gonna be fun. If you're looking for guided tours out west, we'll take you out. Bighorns, Sledwild, Sledwild.com, right? Yep, Sledwild.com. Got okay. clinics, tours, rentals. Awesome. All right, thanks, guys.